Revelation of the word in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak a breakthrough. I speak a divine connection. I speak a divine favor that Lord, anybody that is going to receive your word, let there be a transformation. I break every foul blood covenants that Lord has been made against your children. I break them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any foul sacrifice that has been set, O oh God, to sabotage the destiny of your children, I break it in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak a divine connection. Let them connect unto this word in the name of Jesus. Any interference, anything that Lord may take away the attention, I break it in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we say thank you because you are a good God, even as we saturate the atmosphere with your presence. Sense. We give you the glory and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Uh, somebody shout with me, Amen. 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 Now, uh, may the Lord bless you as we connect. And uh, I just want to share with you something that God has been putting into my spirit. And uh, one of the things that we need to ask ourselves especially in this particular time, uh, what is our agreement or what is the agreement between man and God? Because an agreement or a covenant is an agreement between two people. And every time a covenant is broken, every time a covenant or an agreement is broken, there are always repercussions or manifestations that have always to follow because it is a covenant that places us to be right with God. When people enter into a covenant, it is an agreement between two people. Let me say that one again. When people enter into a covenant, it is an agreement between two people. And most of the times, the enemy wants to come in between the covenant between God and the, co the, co the covenant between God and man so that he can bring the things that violate the statutes that God has already set into place. Every time the enemy wants to destroy the children of God, he will always introduce things that will make them to forfeit the agreement that God had given unto them. And that is why when we look into the scriptures from the book of Exodus down to the book of Leviticus and Numbers, we find that it is a book. The, these are the books of the discussions of the content of the covenant. And one of the things that God was very much sensitive is that he used to remind them the things that they should do so that they can stay within the content of the covenant and the things that they should not do so that they cannot find themselves outside the covenant. And you find that even when he speaks of the blessing in Deuteronomy chapter number 28, he says that it shall come to pass when you stay within the, within the content of the covenant, then these blessings I'm going to command them and they will follow you and overtake you. But if you reach to a place whereby you break my covenant and you disobey, then these curses are going to come after you and they shall overtake you. So, which means that sometimes there are manifestation of things that can happen, not because God is trying to chasten his people, but sometimes the breakage of a covenant can allow God's wrath to manifest into a nation or a city or any country that is within the covenant of God. Let's look into the scripture in the book of Revelation chapter number 21. Revelation chapter number 21 is, the Bible says in Revelation chapter number 21 verse number 22. Revelation chapter number 21, verse number 22. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun. The city had no need of the sun. The city had no need of the sun, of the moon, or the sun in it. For the glory of God illuminated it, 
the lamp its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall be shut of all by, by day. There shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But they shall be no means enter anything that is defiled or cause abomination or lie. But only those who are written in the books of life. So we find that there is a new covenant that God is releasing. And that is why every nation that was in that city or every nation that is present in that city in that city for the glory which they are saved for and that is why you have to understand that you should not by any means glory in the glory which you have not yet achieved and that is why every time God wants to do something he has to make a covenant between his people a covenant it means that it is the ability to swear on something it is an oath and that oath, whenever it is into place, it makes sure that the people that enters into that covenant, they become one. There is a covenant that we have entered into with Christ. And sometimes you find that a covenant involves three things. The first thing, whenever there is a covenant, there is what I call the blood. Because the blood of Jesus Christ is the blood that speaks of better things than the blood of of Abel. The second thing is the sacrifice and the third thing is the incense that has to be offered. So when a covenant is made, something has to die for something if in order for something else to rise up. Every place there is a covenant, it introduces death so that something else can be able to have life. And that is why the enemy wants to fight against the covenant so that God's people cannot be able to experience the presence of Jehovah God. Because he understands that if we can stay within the covenant that has been given unto us, then we are going to be able to experience the manifestation of God. In the book of Revelation, we find that there is a city we are going unto. Every city must bring it. And every city, everyone must bring their glory. And to take an oath, you must swear by the greater name. So this one, it means that when you enter into covenant, every covenant that a person enters into, it takes a swearing. For example, when our leaders, they swear, they are swearing into a covenant that they are going to protect the constitution of the people of the same land. And that is why when they swear, they cannot go against what they have sworn because they have entered into a covenant. Now, God will always make sure that he remains God. And God is always a covenant-keeping God. Every time we find ourselves into trouble, we need to remind God about his covenant. Every time that the children of Israel found themselves into trouble, they reminded God about his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that is why they call him the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Reason, they understood that he is a covenant-keeping God. In other words, when God promises something about your life, he cannot fail what he has said. In the book of Numbers, the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he a son of man that he should repent. Anything that God has spoken concerning your life, it, he will surely make it come to pass because everything that he promises he makes sure that it comes to happen and that is why in order for God to deliver your nation for God to remember our nation for God to remember your city for God to remember your village for God to remember everything that concerns us let us remember to remind him about his covenant what is that that God has spoken about Kenya I have heard that you say that Kenya is going to be a lighthouse of the of the gospel Kenya is going to be a springboard a springboard a springboard for the revival the things that God has covered 
covenanted with us are the things that every time we go into the presence of God, we must be able to remind him. Some of us, there are covenants that are in your family. And God is saying that that covenant that I made with your family is the same covenant that you must say. You must remind him. Let me tell you, child of God, in order to hold God accountable, you have to remind him about his covenant. Every time you go in the presence of God, the only document that is valid in the presence of God is the covenant of God. And that covenant, when you open it and you read it, the content in his presence, he is a God that is always humbled when the people are able to remember Mind him his covenant and that is why I'm here to speak to somebody maybe your family is passing through pain maybe your people are passing through things that you do not understand why they are happening let me tell you you need to remind him about this covenant the covenant of victory, the covenant of salvation, the covenant of marriage, the covenant of deliverance, that thing that is spoke are concerning your family. Some of you, when you are growing up, there were prophets that were sent into your family, and they say that this child is going to be a mighty man of God. This child is going to set the nation free. Anything that God has spoken concerning you, or concerning your family, or concerning yourself, or concerning your children, that thing behind it, there is a covenant and that covenant you have to stand with it because the devil does not fear anything but he fears where there is a covenant because where there is a covenant, there is a seal Somebody say amen. So we find that there is a covenant. That is why in order for God to act for our nation, we have to remind him about his Covenant. Somebody say covenant. Somebody say covenant. Somebody say covenant. We have to remind him about his covenant. Let's remind him about his covenant. Remind him about his covenant. Thank you, Apostle Junior. Remind him about his covenant. What he has said about you. Let me tell you, some of you, the devil is speaking you up and he wants to mess you up. He wants to mess up your children. He wants to mess up our nation. And because we do not remember the covenant, the devil wants us to focus on the things that he's doing. But God is saying, what is that thing that has spoke to you when you are pregnant? What is that thing that is spoke to your family when your family was still young? What is that thing that is spoke unto you when you are struggling? These are the things that you must remind him. If you can remind him, he will do it. Not that because he's a deaf God. Not that because he cannot remember. But to remind him because he wants to understand if you are a responsible child. If you are a responsible child, because a responsible child will always talk to the father about the things that they're supposed to do to him. And that is why even me, my sons, when they need books, I know that they need books, but it is their responsibility on their part to remind me about the books they need so that I can see their responsibility. When we remind God about his covenant in us, we are simply proving our responsibility and we are demonstrating that he is our father. So there are three things about the covenant. Number one, it is the word. The word. The word of God. And that is why the Bible says that and his word is true. When God speaks, when God wants to do anything, he does it through his word. And the Bible says that he cannot, he cannot allow his word to fall onto the ground. What he spoke concerning you, that is what you need to go with it in the presence of God. So the first thing that is in the covenant, it is the word. Somebody say the word. The word of God. The word of God is life. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of God is bread of life. The word of God is water. When you stand before God and you speak to him his word, he responds with manifestation. When you speak unto him his word, in other words, God expects you to speak to him about him. And when you talk to him about him, he does what you he does what we expect him to do unto us. There is nothing that God cannot do when you speak unto him about his word. 
anything that you want, speak unto him about his word. Number number two, it is the name. There is only one name, the name that is above every name. And this name is the name Jesus. It has been given power. It has been given authority. It has been given everything that you need. And that is why when you speak about this name, whoever will call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. No matter how situation might be, but when you call upon the name of Jesus in your circumstance, in your sickness, in your trouble, in your pain, in your struggling relationship, when you speak and call upon the name of Jesus, he shall hear your voice. Then number three is holiness. He said that nations will be delivered by keeping a covenant. The only way that the nations are going to be delivered from this calamity is when we can be able to keep the covenant or return to the covenant. Let me tell you, child of God, the only protection that you have for this season, it is the covenant of God. I was seeing on the media today, they were saying that almost 800,000 people will die. Let me tell you, a nation that is covenanted, that nation cannot be predicted to die, and it can never die. One time, Balaam invited Balaam to curse the children of Israel, and when Balaam was on the way coming, an angel came on the way of Balaam, and resisted Balaam, and when Balaam was beating up the donkey, the donkey was able to see the supernatural, and Balaam asked the donkey, why is it that you have refused him to obey my voice today? The donkey asked Balaam, have I ever refused to serve you? Have I ever refused to walk with you? Why is it that today you are so cruel against me? Today I came on this telecast. The Lord has sent me to come and prophesy that every Balaam that is coming against your country for destruction with the destruction prophecy, God has sent me to come and declare the donkey of Balaam will not move to destroy the Israelites. The donkey of Balaam will not get into a city. The donkey of Balaam will not get into your family. The donkey of Balaam will not get to everything that you have. I came to let somebody know there is a donkey of Balaam that has been sent by Balaam himself to cast against Israel. But the Lord says an angel of God is standing against Balaam and no weapon fashioned against your city shall prosper. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. If you believe a donkey of Balaam will be stopped on the way, the donkey of Balaam is coming with Balaam so that he can say that Israel must die. But the Lord says on this telecast, the donkey of Balaam will not reach into Kenya. The donkey of Balaam will not reach into South Africa. The donkey of Balaam will not go down to Zimbabwe. The donkey of Balaam will not go down to Zambia because the angel of God is standing on the way of Balaam. The donkey spoke to Balaam and said to Balaam, Have I not served you all the days? Why is it that today you have decided to be cruel to me? And the Lord spoke unto Balaam. And he said that instead of cursing those people, you have to begin to bless them. Because you cannot curse whom the Lord has already blessed. Can I preach the way I feel it on this telecast? Vincent Wanga, Martin Praise. Can I speak the way I feel it? You cannot curse the one that the Lord has already blessed. I came to let you know that it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what the WHO says. But God 
God says that whoever God has already blessed, no man can ever cast them. Whoever God has already lifted, the curse of Balaam will not exist. I come to let you know today, anybody that cast you, the curse that they were planning against you, the Lord will turn it around to become a blessing. The curse will become a blessing. Your business will be blessed. Your marriage will be blessed. Your relationship will be blessed. Your job will be blessed. Everything that concerns you. I hear the Lord say that they say that you can never go anywhere. The Lord is turning that curse into a blessing in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen if you can hear me. Just type the word I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed. Confess it by yourself. Just comment by saying I am blessed. 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 Yes, you are blessed Martin. You are blessed Vincent. Somebody say I am blessed. I came to let you know you are blessed. Whatever is attached unto you, it is already blessed. Samson, you are blessed. Whatever the enemy wanted to do against you, you are blessed because the curse that Balaam was Scaring, the Lord turned it into a blessing. Somebody say amen. Oh, a blessing of a covenant. When you are in a covenant, even those who want to curse you, they begin to bless you. Even those who want to stand against you, they start speaking good about you. They start speaking victory about you. They start speaking good things about you. I'm talking to somebody today. The Lord is saying that whatever evil was fashioned against you, the Lord will turn it into for your blessing. Because that blessing is going to speak for you. Any curse that the enemy has set against you, you cannot curse him, the Lord that has already blessed him. And that is why when Balaam came down, the donkey, the, the donkey could not be able to move. On the other side, Balaam is frustrated. The donkey is crying. The donkey is seeing what Balaam cannot be able to see. I pray today that God God will open up the eyes of those that your enemies are being are using so that they can see your protection without their knowledge. I'm here to speak to somebody whoever is planning your downfall, even that which that is being used, they will see fire inside their pot. Even that sorcerer that is being used, they will see water turning into blood because a covenant that you carry. That covenant, no weapon can be able to penetrate. You carry the power of God. You carry the anointing of God. And no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Somebody say amen. I speak to you now. Anybody that is planning for your destruction. The Lord say every Balaam. Their donkey will not move. Their money which they are using will not move. Their property which they are using will not move. Whatever energy or strength that has been propelling them. The Lord will show himself strong. And the voice of Balaam will turn into a blessing. Because you are in a covenant. Somebody say I carry a covenant. I carry a covenant. I carry a covenant. Thank you Yvonne Wancha. A fantastic job. God bless you. Kivaya Vincent. God bless you. Yes, Samson bless you. God bless you. Just say I carry a covenant. Say I'm blessed. Shout again I'm blessed. Now I want to show you very quickly the things that come along with the covenant. Number one is what I call the covenant of salvation. The covenant of salvation. This covenant of salvation is found in Christ Jesus. It is a covenant of salvation. It's a covenant that Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice on the cross. And he died. In Jeremiah chapter number 6 verse number 31. 
Jeremiah chapter number 6 verse number 31. Thank you man of missions. I can hear you sir. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse number 31. I'm talking about the covenant of salvation. Remember one time Noah when the Lord saved him. He saved him together with his family. You are the reason why your family cannot die in sin. Some of your members cannot die into destruction. Whatever the enemy wants to do against your family, the devil cannot succeed because you have a covenant in that family. Can I preach the way I feel it? I came to let somebody know the devil cannot destroy that family. You carry a covenant that is supposed to bring a transformation. You carry a covenant that God cannot let you die before your grandfather has to be born again. The Lord cannot let you die before your mother comes unto the Lord. The Lord cannot let you die before your husband is born again. You are carrying a covenant of salvation of that family. The covenant of salvation in Jeremiah chapter 6 Verse 31, let me read very quickly. I feel the presence of God in this house. He says that uh, Jeremiah, uh, uh, Jeremiah, the Bible says in chapter 6, 30, people will call them rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. Why? Because when they walk away of the covenant of God, they become rejected. But when they accept the covenant of God according to Hebrews chapter number 8 verse number 13, they become acceptable into the covenant of God. I'm speaking to somebody today. May the covenant speak for you. I don't know whom I'm speaking to, but the Lord is saying, the covenant will speak for you. In that he says a new covenant has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete is growing old. Is ready to vanish away. When the old covenant disappears, he introduces a new covenant. So there is a covenant of salvation. Then the second covenant is a covenant of marriage. Whereby a man and woman comes together to the altar. And they give themselves unto the Lord. And the Bible says for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother. And they too shall become one person. A covenant of marriage. Then number three is a covenant of blessing and with the covenant of blessing the Bible says that is the one that gives you the power to gain wealth let me tell you when you enter into this covenant poverty is not your portion poverty is not your portion I came to let somebody know on this telecast every spirit of poverty that is coming into your family every spirit of poverty that is striking your pocket to try to bring you down the Lord is about to break it in the name of Jesus I don't know whom I'm talking to the spirit of poverty coming through Mshwari coming through Mkopa coming through Okoa Jahasi coming through KCB loan I came to let you know that covenant that spirit may the Lord rebuke it in the name of Jesus somebody say amen somebody say amen I came to speak to my brothers the Lord has sent me to come and let you know he's the one that gives you power to make wealth no power to be poor but power to make wealth because if you are empowered financially, you will support the gospel. If you are empowered financially, you will help the widows. If you are empowered financially, the poor will not sleep hungry. I come to let you know the covenant to make wealthy is after you. Somebody say amen. I come to let you know any blessing, anybody that say that you will never prosper, I come to let you know the Lord is about to break the curse. Anyone that say that there are certain boundaries in your village that you will never cross them because of the anointing that is on my head. That 
curse is broken and the Lord is releasing the power to make wealth. I came to let you know this year in this scarcity, you will build a new house. This year in this scarcity, you will get a new contract. This year in this scarcity, your hands are going to prosper because the Lord is the one that gives you the power to make wealth. Somebody say, I got the power. Shout again, I got the power. Musembi, I got the power. Bishop Richard Okawa, I got the power. Somebody say, I have the power to make wealth. He gives you the power to make wealth. Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse number 17. The scripture says that I am the Lord your God that gives you the power to make wealth. Listen to me. Anything that helps prosperity is not the devil, is not God. That is the agent of the devil. Any person that helps the gospel of prosperity is not propelled by God. It is the agent of the enemy. The scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse 17, he says, Then you say in your heart, my power and my mighty has gained all this. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For he is the one who gives the power to make wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers. As it is today. I come to declare today. That may you receive the power to make wealth. So that he can establish his covenant if the if you are still poor, God has not yet established this covenant. I'm preaching good today. If you are poor, God has not yet established his covenant. But he establishes his covenant when he makes you to gain power and to gain wealth. The moment you make wealth, let me tell you, there is no way you can glorify God in poverty. There is a man that is watching me right now. This man, he always feeds the hungry. He feeds the widows. He feeds the orphans. He's a voice in his own community. Let me tell you, poverty is a denier of a voice. When you are poor, you become voiceless. There are things that you cannot answer by the reason of your prayer. But there are things you can answer to by the reason of your money. Money sometimes speaks louder than your own voice. I pray today, if I be a man of God, may the Lord increase the volume of your voice. Not just in prayer, but may your voice be increased financially. In that when you enter into a village, everybody that try to speak, they become a loudspeaker. May your voice become louder that nobody in your village we resist it. Do you know when you have got nothing, even the vo even the dog of your village will silence you. When you have got nothing, even the poor man will call you poor. When you have got nothing, even those who have got nothing, they will say you have got nothing. But when you have, there is a dimensional greeting that will always come. There is a dimensional honor that will come. People are not honored by the way they behave. But people, they are honored by what they can offer. Somebody say amen. The Bible says that is the one that gives you power to make wealth. So that he can establish his covenant. People who have given, they attract poverty. Because you cannot receive what you do not give. And you cannot give what you do not have. People that do fight giving. If you follow them very closely, they don't give. But in order for God to establish his covenant of wealth. is when you make wealth. The scripture says that is the one that gives you power. To make wealth is the one that gives you power to make wealth, and that's why in Genesis chapter 12, 
verse number 33, verse number 3, he said unto Abraham, follow me, and I will make you great. I will make you great. I will make you great. And that's why, how do you get it? It is through your tithe, through your giving. You connect for the covenant of blessing through your tithe and your giving. When you give your offering, when you give your seed, you are telling the Lord, you are my strength. You are the one that supplies it to me. Number four is the covenant of priesthood. The covenant of priesthood is the covenant of Levi that is stronger because it is not a political office. The covenant of priesthood, a covenant of negotiation, it makes you to negotiate. When you negotiate, there are things that you must be able to negotiate. Then after you have negotiated, you execute them as a king. So the last covenant is a covenant of a king. But the first covenant you become a, queen, a, a priest. You negotiate, you strike this. Then after you have stricken a deal, you execute what you have, you have executed. So today God is saying today, in that city there will be a new covenant. Today I'm here to speak to my brothers that whatever that has been holding you, God is about to establish a new covenant with your life. After this epidemic is over, there shall be a new covenant in the land, a covenant of prosperity, a covenant of breakthrough. Whatever the enemy was holding, the Lord is about to break it loose. You are about to be ushered in to a new season because anything that was holding on to your blessing he said that you cannot curse what I've already blessed you are blessed in the city blessed in the village blessed when you go out blessed when you come in I came to let you know you carry a blessing you carry a covenant you carry a covenant and the devil cannot stop it I want to pray with you right now. I want to pray with you. Maybe you want to connect yourself with your offering. There is a detail on your screen there. You can do that. That is how you activate the covenant of prosperity, the covenant to make wealth. We connect it by the reason of our giving. Whatever the Lord is connecting you to give, you can give it and the Lord will bless you. I pray that in this atmosphere, as you sow your seed, may the favor of God follow you. There is a number on your screen. Just do it and the Lord will bless you. I want to pray with you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that is connecting to this word. I pray that you will protect them from every spirit of Balaam and Barak against them. Lord, I break it in the name of Jesus. I pray today by the reason of the anointing of this telecast. Let every force of darkness be broken in the name of Jesus. I speak a blessing. I release the anointing. Let the new covenant work for them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Maybe you are there. You want to sow a seed. You want to give to the Lord. There's a number there on your screen. You can do that. There is a till number there as 400. 200, then there's next, there's account number. Be faithful unto this word. The same way the Lord has spoken to your spirit. Be faithful, so into this soil, so into it, and let the Lord himself, who has sent this word, make a covenant with you. Make a covenant with you. I want to pray with people who feel that along the way, they broke the agreement, they broke the covenant, they head with the Lord. I want to pray with you that God will restore that covenant so that you can start that journey afresh. Winston Churchill Okore, God bless you. I want to pray with you now so that you can restore that covenant and God will begin a new journey with you. 
Let's pray together. Father, in the name that is above every name, thank you because you have spoken about the covenant. I pray that this covenant, you seal it around your people, that Lord, they will be protected from every harm and danger. Whatever the enemy may want to do against them, Lord, I decree today, by reason of this word, it is broken in the name of Jesus. I speak a blessing. I speak a breakthrough. I speak divine order and divine blessings upon them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 When you give, you don't give to a man. You are giving to the grace that is upon that man. And when you do that, there is a way that God is able to turn away and to turn around your things. Whatever you have been struggling with, it can be broken today. The covenant the enemy had entered into your life, it can be restored today. When you stand with this ministry, be faithful and listen to what the Lord is speaking to you and give cheerfully and the Lord will greatly bless you. I want to pray for those that are sick. Maybe you are sick, you are struggling with any pain of your body. I want to pray with you and the Lord will heal you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I give you the glory for all that are listening to me. I pray that you bless them. I speak a blessing upon them. And I pray today, Lord, wherever they are, let the anointing of God come upon them. In the name of Jesus. I pray that to restore them. I pray that to heal them. Anywhere the enemy broke the hedge, I pray that let the hedge be restored. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. You are blessed. God bless you. Uh, we will see you again on Thursday. We will see you again on Thursday, God willing. And uh, I just want to ask that uh, for those who are want to stand with this ministry, you can be a blessing. Sow your seed. You are sowing it to the right soil. You can sow it. You can sow it monetary. You can give something that is tangible and the Lord will greatly bless you. Thank you and have a great time in the presence of God. You are covered with the covenant of God. Amen. Amen. Take care.